Welcome to the summary of chapter three. Let's take a look, first of all, at a key topic from chapter three, management versus leadership. For your exam, you do need to know that management is all about directional power, positional power, maintaining, administrating, focusing on systems and structure, and relying on control. Whereas leadership is all about human interactions, inspiring trust, focusing on relationships, developing and innovating, guiding, influencing, and collaborating, more relational power. When you think about management, you could think about focusing on the near term, but leadership is long range vision, asking what and why. Leadership is focusing on the horizon. Management is focusing on the bottom line. Management is accept the status quo, do things right. Leadership, challenge the status quo, do the right things. And management is focusing on operational issues and problem solving, whereas leadership is all about focusing on vision, alignment, motivation, and inspiration. Now, for your exam, you do need to know the different leadership styles. Lazy fair, a hands-off approach, transactional, promoting compliance by followers through both rewards, call this management by exception, dealing with each person on a one-on-one -on -one basis, depending on their own specific needs. But then for your exam, you need to pay close attention to servant leadership. Servant leadership is supposedly big on this new exam. Servant leadership demonstrates commitment to serve and put others first. And the tenets are being an active listener, empathy, healing, awareness, persuasion, conceptualization, foresight, stewardship, growth, and community. We also have transformational leadership, charismatic leadership, and interactional. But in my mind, one of the biggest that you need to pay attention to is the Percy Blanchard model, the situational leadership style. Now, when we talk about situational leadership, it's all about being a leader for the particular person using a particular approach. Not every person needs the same type of leadership to be applied to them. S1 is the directing style of leadership. And this is used when we need to direct the individuals to a very high degree. However, we do not need to exert so much support because they're eager beavers. They want to learn. They want to get started with a the job. They're determined and they just need direction to get moving with it. S2, this is where you exert a coaching leadership approach. The coaching leadership approach deals with individuals that have a little bit more experience than S1. However, they lack the confidence. So they need a lot more support and they also need direction as well. Think about this like a player on a team that needs motivation, encouragement, and also pointing in the right direction to do better on the sport. S3 is supporting. We call this participative leadership. This is where the leader leverages the power of the team, leverages the input from the team to support whichever team member needs it. The supporting leadership style deals with individuals that have a high degree of capability, but for one reason or the other, they are either unwilling to carry out the task or they just need support to do so. Last but not least, we have S4, the delegating box. And this is where we have capable individuals who are highly motivated. And we use this with senior staff and people who are in the C-suite or the VP suite, especially directors, managers who are capable. Now at the bottom there, we've got the development level of the individual. So in D1, this individual has low competence, but high commitment. Remember, they're eager beavers. They're not very good yet, but they're very committed. A lot of skin in the game. D2, low to some competence, more than D1, but they have low commitment. D3, moderate to high competence. They got variable commitment and they need that support through the team. That is where you position team members around the individual who needs that support. We call it participative leadership. D4, individuals in D4 have high competence and high commitment. This is good for you to know for your exam. Also for your exam, you need to be aware of power types. 
positional, informational, and all of these other power types on the screen, which I will not read to you. You can read them, pause it, read through it. This is all in the PMBOK guide. Here's a question. Joni is guiding influence and collaborating using relational power. What best describes this? Now the words are from none other than leadership, relational power, influence, collaborating. Those are all leadership words. The true measure of leadership, as my mentor John Maxwell says, is influence. So when you hear influence, you should immediately think leadership. And that concludes our review of chapter three. Next, we'll be going into chapter four.